Intro Algebra Lesson 4-7a. We've spent many, many weeks and months solving equations, playing the shuffling game, using inverse operations to move one variable to the other side, numbers without variables to the opposite side, so we can solve for it, isolate it. Lately, we've been spending some time working with graphs, how to use input-output tables to make a graph of an equation and most recently, slope-intercept form. What's interesting is we can actually take those abilities of slope-intercept form and graphing, and we can graph an equation and use the graph to solve the equation. In other words, get the same answer we would have gotten if we'd have used the inverse operation shuffling technique. So here are some steps to solving linear equations with a graph. Step number one. Now some of these steps may seem complicated, but once we look at them and we, we kind of practice them, you'll find out they're really not that bad. Some of the steps are really quite easy. Step number one, you want to write it in the form ax plus b is equal to zero. What's important is you see that equals zero. In other words, what I'm telling you to do is get everything onto one side. So there might be stuff on both sides of the equal sign. You need to rearrange it so that everything is on one side. It doesn't matter which side, just make the entire problem equal to zero. After you've done that, I'm joking when I say the next step is the hardest step. It's actually extremely easy. Where you see that zero, it now looks like a y. The ax plus b is still the same, but now instead of a zero, it's a y. That's all step two is. Replace that zero with the letter y. And if you notice, you've got y equals ax plus b. That's what you're going to graph, which looks eerily familiar. It's very, very similar to y equals mx plus b because it is the same as y equals mx plus b. We just don't realize at the beginning what might be the slope until we get everything onto one side. There might be x's on both sides. We need to get them all onto the same side so that equals 0, replace the 0 with a y, and then you can graph y equals mx plus b. Now you might be saying, okay, great, I can graph y equals mx plus b, but where does that solve? Where it solves is what this clue right here. You have a y value that's 0. And when you have a y value that's zero, you're going to be on the x-axis. And so the trick to solving these equations is find the x-intercept of your graph. Look at your graph and figure out where it crosses the x-axis. Because where it crosses the x-axis is the answer. It's the solution. So let's practice a couple of these steps. Our first example, write the equation in the form ax plus b is equal to zero. This right here is basically step number one, get everything equal to zero, then write the related function y equals mx plus b. That's essentially step number two. And step number two is very easy, because all you're doing is replacing the zero with the letter y. So let's try it out on this equation. 2x minus 5 is equal to 1. We can change this to plus negative 5 so that we don't make any mistakes with our signs. And our objective is to get everything onto one side so it equals zero. Rather than trying to move both of these to the right, it's probably easier to just add negative one to both sides. Now those cancel out. 2x plus negative six is equal to zero. We just took care of step number one. We got everything onto one side and made it equal zero. And then, a very easy step two, replace the zero with a y. So your final answer, if you want to reverse it so it looks more familiar to you, y is equal to 2x plus negative 6. Steps 1 and 2. You've now made y equals mx plus b a form that's very easy to graph. Let's try it again. All right, you might notice in this problem it has fractions. That can be scary. But what's nice is we have tricks to deal with fractions. We can multiply the entire problem by 3. And the reason I chose 3 is this has a denominator of 3. This really has a denominator of 1, and this term has a denominator of 1. So 3, 1, and 1, that's the common denominator. So we multiply everything by that 3. All terms have to be multiplied by it. If you multiply 3 over 1 by 4 thirds, you're going to get 4x. 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 2x is 6x. According to step 1, we need to get everything onto one side, so it's a lot easier to move one term using inverse operations. Negative 2x plus 9 is equal to 0. That is step 1. We've now made it equal to 0. Step 2, replace the 0 
with the letter Y, and if you want, you can rearrange that so Y is first, negative 2X plus 9. Y equals MX plus B, slope-intercept form. Okay, so I've told you that you can solve an equation with a regular solving and shuffling method, inverse operations, or you can use a graph. So let's take a look at one equation, and let's do it both ways. First, we're going to start off algebraically. So I'll rewrite that problem. You can put a 1 in front of the negative x, so it's negative 1x, make it plus negative 3 is equal to 0.5x. And rather than trying to deal with the 0.5, we could double everything here. If you double this, double this, and double this, you won't have any more decimals. So this would become negative 2x, that would become negative 6, this would become positive 1x. So negative... <coughs> Negative 2x plus negative 6 equals 1x. And we're not graphing, we're solving algebraically, so we're going to try to get all the x's onto one side. So the opposite of negative 2x is to add 2x. And then they cancel out negative 6 is equal to 3x. And you divide both sides by 3, and you'll get your final answer. Negative 2 is equal to x. So apparently the solution is negative 2 equals x, and we can test this. If you put negative 2 right here, the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Positive 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1, and negative 2 times a half is negative 1. So it works on both sides and equals negative 1. We know that's the answer. Now let's see if we can do it graphically. Let's take our equation of negative x, negative 1x plus negative 3, 0.5. Let's do the doubled version so we don't have to deal with any, any decimals. So negative 2x plus negative 6 is equal to 1x. <clears throat> According to step 1, we need to get everything onto one side. So we'll add negative 1x to both sides. Now you have negative 3x plus negative 6 is equal to 0. That's all step 1 according to graphing and solving. Step 2, replace the 0 with the letter y. And I'll rewrite it so that y is first, so it looks more familiar. y equals negative 3x plus negative 6. And if you want, you can write the negative 3 as a fraction, so you have your rise over your run. You go over to your graph, and you have a y-intercept of negative 6, 2, 4, 6. And according to the slope, we're supposed to go down 3 and write 1. Now, if I go down 3 and write 1, I can do this as long as I want. The problem is... I'm supposed to be trying to solve this with a graph, which means I'm looking for where it crosses the x axes. And if I go down and right, down and right, down and right, I get further and further and further from my x axes. So I have to remember that if my slope is negative 3 over 1, that is exactly the same as positive 3 over negative 1. So I can go up 3 as long as I go left 1. 1, 2, 3, left 1. 1, 2, 3, left 1. 1, 2, 3, left 1. And now I can make my graph. And if I notice on my graph where it crosses the x-axis, right there is the solution, which happens to be at x is equal to negative 2. So where my graph crosses the x-axis is the exact same answer I would have gotten if I solved algebraically. So the two are connected because... If you recall, here's my y value of 0, and when I have a y value of 0, it means I don't go up, I don't go down on the graph, I'm on the x-axis. That's the answer that I am looking for. So using y equals mx plus b, you can make an equation's graph, and where it crosses the x-axis is your solution.